Part 2. Verdant Wind. Great Tree Moon. Blood of the Eagle and Lion. Now in control of the Great Bridge of Murden, the Alliance Army invades the Imperial territories. In response, the Imperial Army garrisons soldiers at Fort Mercius. All of that went about as well as it could have. Each lord has agreed to provide us with soldiers and supplies. I'm impressed you were able to convince all of those scattered nobles to help us. I thought they would quarrel about how much support they should each provide. That's what they usually do. Well, Count Gloucester took the initiative in taking on responsibilities. I presume that was because you spoke with him in advance, Lawrence. I merely explained the situation at hand. Then my father simply followed your lead, Claude. It was because you had the professor there to represent Lady Rhea. My father is a pious follower of the Church of Seros. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I wasn't under the delusion that it was my personal charm that unified everyone. Thanks for that, by the way. I hope you don't feel like I used you, because I sort of used you. I appreciate that. We don't have time to be picky about our methods. But be honest. You're having a hard time adjusting to your new role, aren't you? You weren't even a follower of Seros to begin with, and somehow you've ended up as a representative of the Church. I realize that you might feel guilty about deceiving the believers for our cause, but this is just what the Archbishop wanted. She's the highest authority in the Church. Besides, as wielder of the Sword of the Creator, it's undeniable that you're special. I think you should be more confident in yourself and use your position to the fullest. I have news. Our enemy is gathering troops at Fort Mercius. Immense, likely led by a renowned general, or perhaps even... Well now, that would be interesting. If we can defeat the Emperor, then the Empire will collapse. There's something else. An unidentified army has approached the Great Bridge of Murden. They pass through the Daphnil and Gloucester territories from the Northwest with incredible speed. They're raising the banner of House Blathed. Perhaps they are the remnants of the Fargus royal family. From what we could tell, they posed no threat to the citizens of the Alliance, and so we refrain from engaging them in needless combat. Maybe they hope to fight against the Empire to avenge their fallen prince. And what about the bridge itself? Obviously, we wouldn't let them pass without receiving envoys first. We thought they may try to force their way through. We considered firing warning arrows, but they left immediately, heading east. Are they intending to use one of the bridges in Ordelia territory? Most likely. But the Imperial Army still controls those bridges. I can't imagine what they intend to do in the Empire, even if they do manage to break through. I'm reluctant to ease up on our surveillance, but it would be difficult to track them there. For now, let's assume they're just troops belonging to the Old Kingdom. In any case, we should proceed with caution. Soon we'll be entering Empire territory ourselves. If our enemies are going to intercept us with an attack, it will probably be at Grander Field. How fitting that it was the site of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion five years ago. My next steps are clear.
Scythia, it's no good for you to expose yourself to such strong sunlight. And a chill could steal upon you at any moment. You really ought to have worn a mantle. Hmm. You have been running yourself absolutely ragged. Would you please consider taking some rest? Enough is enough. I am fully aware. Now, stop following me. I'm only concerned for your health. That's great and all, but I feel fine today. And I'm perfectly capable of caring for myself. I don't have time to take a rest. I'm overloaded with work, and I have less time than everyone else. I just want to do my own thing. Bring order to the Alliance, and put my parents' minds at ease. No need to rush. How can you be so certain your lifespan is shortened anyway? I do not know who decided that, but consider me skeptical. If you are healthy now, and if you take proper care of yourself, you ought to live just as long as anyone else. That's all well and good, but those vitamin-packed sweets you brought tasted weird. If you want a healthy body, then you need to start with what you eat. You have a point, but those health sweets are gross. I sent for the finest in wholesome, healthy treats for you. I asked only for the very sweetest. That was pretty nice of you. I'm sorry, Lawrence. Thank you for being so thoughtful. Still, I don't need bushels and bushels of them. Gaining a ton of weight won't exactly lengthen my lifespan either. I mean, I'd like to be able to hang out with you as much as possible. And for as long as possible. Truly? Oh, I'm so glad. I feel the same. Even in an otherwise perfect future, I still cannot see a happy life for myself without you in it. In fact, the more time we spend together, the more essential to me you become. So let us walk side by side toward a future together. Yikes! Keep it down, will you? Why are you flustered? What is there to be embarrassed about? You know I will always care for you. Okay, okay, noted. Will you just calm down already? You need not worry about a thing. I will look after you no matter what may come. After all, the future of Fodlan rests upon my shoulders, does it not? <laughs> I won't give up on myself either. Thanks for caring, Lawrence. <laughs> Where is that darn ladder? Need help with something, Lysithia? I can't find the ladder anywhere, and I needed to check out the books up on that top shelf. Want me to just grab one for you? No. I need to be able to dig around myself. No problem. You could sit on my shoulders instead. Up you go! <laughs> Nobody saw that. Anyway, thank you. That was helpful. I can't believe how many fantastic books were hidden just out of reach up there. Thanks for being so patient while I rummaged. No problem at all. It was my pleasure. Hey, Raphael. You're always extra nice to me. Is it because I remind you of your sister Maya? Yeah. I can't help but think about her whenever I see you around. We lost our parents when she was still real little, so she never had adults around to do stuff for her. That's probably why she grew up to be the kind of kid who wants to do everything on her own. That's certainly something I can relate to. I keep telling her that it's okay to rely on her big bro a little bit. Like when there's stuff she can't do because she's too small. She just needs to ask someone bigger to do it. I told her that she could help me when I'm having trouble with stuff too. Then we would be even. Young or old? We can all help one another out. We each have our strengths and weaknesses. Receiving help and providing help in return. It sounds so simple, really. It is simple! I knew you'd get it. I do. And I hope you understand that you can come to me for help too, Raphael. I can't be the only one receiving aid. It makes me feel incompetent and like a kid. I hate that. Hmm. All right, then. You could help me clean up my room. I bet it's a disaster knowing you. I'll help you on that front, but I've got some rules on how to keep things tidy. You'll need to listen up. If you could help with the actual tidying, that would probably be better. 
No need to bother with rules. I don't really do so good with remembering the complicated stuff. Oh, I got an idea. It would be even better if you could just come by and tidy up from now on. Uh... If you keep helping me, then I can help you whenever you need it. No guilt. Whenever I need it, huh? How long does that offer hold? From now on. Like, for always. I don't know what's so difficult to understand. For always sounds nice. I'm fine with that. Hey, Raphael. I finally finished that necklace for you. Here you go. Huh? Oh! Whoa! This is incredible! And so shiny! You're like an artist, Hilda! How'd you do this? Just like I told you, I put the flowers and the shiny rocks in a bottle, and then poured in some resin to preserve everything. I thought the flowers you had were looking a little pathetic, so I added a few of my own. It was hard work, making sure the flowers and the stones were spread evenly, getting rid of the air bubbles... What's this? The part you hang around your neck? I thought you used the one I gave you. Oh yeah, no. That's a cord I braided. I was going to use metal, but some people are allergic to metal, so I figured better safe than sorry. Anyway, you didn't give me much to work with, and look what I pulled off. I am a miracle worker. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. Thank you, Hilda. <laughs> Whoa, hold up! What's with the blubbering? It's just... I bet my sister never got anything so pretty in her whole life. She's had to deal with so much because of me. I never got her anything this nice and cute before. She's gonna love it and be so happy. <laughs> Uh, um, okay. Yes, okay, that's enough. Come on, you're embarrassing me here. <sighs> if you're really that happy, I'm glad I put some effort into something for once. Don't... <laughs> Don't you always put effort into things? <laughs> that's sweet of you, but no. I don't want to put in effort and then disappoint people. It's dispiriting, not to mention tiring. But, what if they're not disappointed? Then they'd feel great, and you'd feel great too. Yeah, you have a point there. I guess I'm realizing that now. You know, thanks to you, I'm starting to see things from my brother's perspective. What do you mean? Do you have a big bro too? I do. I've always thought of him as an overprotective nuisance, but now I feel thankful. Looking at you, I couldn't help but think, eh, sometimes big brothers are okay. I didn't do anything special, though. It's natural for a big bro to look after his little sis. Oh, that reminds me. I still haven't found anything special enough to repay you for the necklace. I got an idea, though. How about I help you make a tough-looking necklace for your big bro? No need. I have a better idea. When the wars simmer down, why don't you and your sister come visit me? Really? That's it? Yeah, I want to make sure it suits her. And then I can adjust the cord if I need to. Of course we'll come visit. I told my sis all about you, and she already wants to meet you. Well, good. I look forward to it. In the meantime, hold me close to your heart. Uh, what? That's what the necklace would say if it could talk. <laughs> Hold me close to your heart. Um, hey. Oh, Lysithia. Something I can do for you? Can you help me out with my shopping? Yes, of course. You need me to carry stuff? Actually, can you pick up some tea for me? I do it, but I'm drowning in work. You're so busy you can't go shopping. Okay. Do you have a favorite kind of tea? 
I'm not too picky. I just like having it around, really. Whatever's cheapest works for me. Here's some money. One question. Why me? You don't really need my help for this. I just thought I could lean on you a bit. You know, rather than trying to do everything on my own. Right, I see. Well, good. I'm glad you decided to approach me. Ah, but for this particular task, you might be better off doing it yourself. Oh? There are so many different kinds of tea, and I'm not very discerning. Well, what if I get you one you don't like? When I do my own shopping, I pick a tea at random. Otherwise, I'd be paralyzed by all the choices. It's the same with food. Sometimes I stare and stare at the options and never decide. You look like you were doing just fine when you went to get groceries the other day. I really had to push myself to do that alone. I don't think I can do that again. Sorry. Uh-huh. So, you've stopped trying to do things on your own, then? Yeah. Still, though. For today, how about you have some of my tea? If that'll do. Sounds nice, sure. Do you mind brewing mine while you're at it? Okay. Though I can't do it as skillfully as Lawrence, I'm afraid. I'll get it ready right away. Feel free to start focusing on your work. <laughs> what? I mean, you seem plenty reliable to me. I do? Really? How so? You're fun, you're easy to be around, and you rarely complain when you help others. Well, I'm just pouring you some tea. I'm not sure that qualifies as help. It's not easy for me to rely on people, but with you, it's different. Well, there aren't many things I can do, frankly. What I can do, I will do. So if you need anything, ask me, and I'll try to help. You really are unreliable, as it turns out. Guess I'll just have to take your word for it. Hey, Ignatz. Drawing again? I am. I suppose that's rather irresponsible, as we're in the midst of a war. But ever since we last spoke, I felt keen to pursue my artistic aspirations. Like I said, it's your calling. Don't feel bad about it. All right. I'll try to embrace it. And you, are you practicing archery today? More just double-checking this bowstring. I want to make sure it's ready for the next battle. <laughs> okay. Well, let's both do our best. <laughs> That's the spirit. Does that mean you finally accepted that you're an artist? I'll try to discuss it with my parents after the war. There's little demand for knights in peacetime. In fact, painting might be a more reliable way for me to support my family. I'll try to persuade them with arguments along those lines. Good point. I'm glad you've got some confidence. <laughs> Come to think of it, Leone, what will you do when the war is over? Me? I'm going to become a top-tier mercenary. A mercenary in peacetime? Even after the war's over, there'll be plenty of work for me to do before peace really takes hold. I'll pay what I owe my village back, with interest. After that, I don't know. Never thought about it. I'm sure you can do whatever you put your mind to. Hardly. Lots of options just don't suit me. I mean, could you imagine me as a songstress? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Once I paid off my debts, I guess I'll just have to find something new. <laughs> I don't think there's any rush. You can travel and relax and think about it. Travel, huh? There's an idea. Want to come with? Huh? Me? Sure. You were really excited about different styles across the world, weren't you? Don't you want more of that? Maybe even see the sky in a new shade. Yes, I suppose I do. I'd like to see the whole world. If your parents object, we'll just say I kidnapped you. Actually, feel free to say that even if you go alone. Oh no, I want us to see the world together. Your presence makes every landscape more beautiful. Hey, hold on. What's this all of a sudden? Oh, uh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> You're hilarious, Ignatz. <laughs> There's never a dull moment with you around. <laughs> Indeed. 
When undertaking research, the usual method is to form a hypothesis, then test it with experiments. Those experiments reveal facts and falsehoods, yet sometimes they also unveil an exception. You seem to be that exception when it comes to my crest research. Worry not, Professor. Exceptions are what make my work interesting. Why don't the rules apply to you? I will find out eventually. I feel it is my destiny as a Crest Scholar. Hmm. Okay. After we cross the Great Bridge of Murden, we'll be in my father's territory. We actually crossed it five years ago for the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, remember? Oh, this is terrifying. What am I gonna do? I gotta get a grip. You think we'll meet him on the battlefield and he'll kill me? The front lines cover a long stretch of land, you know? We might not even run into him. So the Boar Prince is dead. Decapitated, I hear. I haven't seen the severed head myself. Perhaps he's still alive and leading that army. You're right. I can't let my emotions take hold. Either way, a major battle awaits us. Try not to die. I'd be annoyed if you did. does it? Well, allow me, as a professional recluse with ten years of experience, to volunteer for... um... staying behind. Oh, who am I kidding? The fighting won't stop until we've defeated Edelgard, will it? Or until we lose, I guess. But there's not much use in thinking about that. graduate of the Golden Deer House, but that was a little before your time, Professor. We won the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. Of course, we mostly have Holtz to thank for that. And now, he's the greatest general in the Alliance. I didn't do so great in comparison. <sighs> Professor, hmm. we might see Edelgard herself leading the enemy in the next battle. If they're coming out of Fort Mercius, our troops might even clash on Grander Field. And those other troops on the march. Who knows what they'll do, or what side they'll take. Not sure how we're supposed to form a strategy with so many unknowns. Hey, how come you only ever flatter me in times like these? What am I supposed to make of that? Anyway, we've come this far. Let's just keep putting one foot in front of the other and see how far we get. Maybe. The bridge of Murden was considerably better fortified than it was five years ago. The bridge was full of soldiers, and they all died. Gloucester has changed its allegiance and joined the faction that is against the Empire. The Alliance will thus remain united. But thanks to this latest ploy, my father is more suspicious of Claude now than ever, if such a thing is possible. Ordinarily, I might credit his helpful posture toward us to his devout faith in the Church of Seros. But it is clear to me now that this is nothing more than a shrewd calculation on his part. 
He is only thinking of his position. We are in the clear for now, but please bear in mind that the Alliance is never an entirely stable union. Claude was saying that our next battle might be in Grander Field. Is that right? Reminds me of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. But of course, that was a very different time. When it was over, all three class heads complimented each other on their bravery. And then we had a party. But we can never go back to that, can we? Excuse me, could you do me a favor? You're a sweetheart. No. Hello there. I've got to keep this place clean, and I mean properly clean, every day. Dust it, sweep it, everything. You never can tell when Lady Rhea might be back. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. I hear we're sending troops to Grander Field next. Is that what's what? That whole area is in the territory of House Burgley's. It's famous as the main granary of Fodlan. If we could capture it, we probably wouldn't have to worry about food anymore. Bread for all. Since you secured the Great Bridge of Murden, trade got a lot easier within the Empire. Nevertheless, profits are rather thin compared to how it was five years ago. You can't be much of a traitor unless you're prepared to traverse the whole of Fodlan. Hello. Hmm. Reconnaissance is becoming more of a risk the deeper we move into enemy territory. If I don't come back, assume I'm dead. Good. We have to be realistic. Don't waste your energy worrying about me. This one do? It's all yours. Take it. Will this one do? It's all yours. Take it. Will this one do? It's all yours. Take it. Tell your friends. <sighs> There's unrest ever. I hope things go back to. Welcome! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Come back soon! I gotta say, it's tough to keep the fighting spirit alive when you recognize your enemies on the battlefield. So you can't avoid it, huh? How did everything get so messed up? Just because we're fighting someone doesn't mean we gotta hate them. That's probably the worst thing about war. Win or lose, I still get a bad taste in my mouth. Defeat the Imperial Army at Grander Field. What will our next objective be? 
I guess we won't have much choice but to try to take Fort Mercius, on the far side of Grander Field. It's probably too soon for us to be thinking about that, isn't it? I'm sure it's already occurred to Claude, though. Huh? I can hardly believe we're crossing the borders of the Empire to battle their army. I never thought I'd see the day. You'd never guess from the calm looks on everyone's faces, though. I mean, we're probably all gonna die, let's be honest. If you don't mind me saying, you don't look like you're in the middle of a crisis either. Oh, um, perhaps that was a little rude of me? Hmm, actually it's the Great Tree Moon now, isn't it? Not that anyone's in much of a mood to celebrate the new year, of course. going to set foot in the Empire. I'm starting to get a little nervous. I guess there's a good chance we'll be fighting more old friends from here on out. Guard's presence suggests that Hubert is around too. He is minister of the Imperial household, after all. He's been around Edelgard since they were children. I suppose he must be pretty happy with his current position. I've cut all contact with my family since joining this fight. Were I to see soldiers of the Galatea family amidst the host flying the royal family's banner, I... well... All chance of reconciliation with my father would end there. I do not know if that is the right path, but the fact is, I've come this far. There's no time for second guessing, not anymore. Ugh. Right. Word just reached me that the Empire has stationed soldiers in Fort Mercius. If they decide to dig in their heels and defend the fort, we'll be in a difficult situation. I hear it's an impregnable keep, surrounded by high ramparts. Taking it would not be easy. Hey, I could use a hand. Hello, Professor. Beyond the Great Bridge of Murden, it's all unfamiliar territory for us. We don't know where Lady Rhea is being held. We ought to investigate all potential locations thoroughly. The Knights of Seros will handle the search. We'll report back if we learn anything. Finally moving into enemy territory. We can expect the war to get even more intense from here on out. I'm really feeling the tension now. I have almost no experience with battles of this scale. Professor, I'll be grateful for your leadership on the battlefield. I know I can trust you. This won't do. I seem to lack the skills required to grieve for the dead. If someone has passed, even someone dear to me, I could stand about and wail or get on with my life. While I'm at it, that whole idea that we must speak well of the dead? I don't understand that either. If I didn't like them when they were alive, then why pretend to do so when they are no longer here? The 
eagle and lion. Has it truly been five years since then? Can you recall whether it was before or after I joined your class, Professor? I am glad you have not forgotten. It was shortly after I joined your class. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. We captured the Great Bridge of Murden, but the fight has only just begun. Enbar, the Imperial Capital, lies far to the south beyond Grander Field. And waiting for us on the way there is the entire Imperial Army, with twice as many troops as us. We had better brace ourselves. Thanks to our victory, I've been able to study the Great Bridge of Murden at my leisure. And you know what? It's an astounding structure. So much history there. Imagine how much time and effort it must have taken to build something that big. Over water, no less. I hope that someday, it will be opened up to the people of Fodlan. A historical site, rather than a military checkpoint. Since Little Claude became their leader, the Alliance Lords haven't been especially unified. Now they're suddenly united for a common cause. As a result, the Empire hasn't been able to perform even one successful incursion. Rather, we're the ones who might get the jump on them. It's incredible. Magical, even. Maybe his strategic genius was simmering for those five years, and it returned to a full boil once you two were reunited. Or maybe he always knew he'd meet you again. And he was preparing for that this whole time. Hmm. Professor. The time's come to fight the Empire, huh? Wow. It's shaping up to be quite the battle. And I've got no problem with that. But that mystery army really worries me. There's no indication if they're friend or foe. Who do you think they are, Professor? I suppose it's possible. After all, His Highness is supposedly dead. Well, whoever they are, I hope we can avoid fighting them. Right. that some unidentified troops have appeared, but apparently they were flying the flag of the Vargas royal family. Do you think it was Dimitri's ghost? His country was taken before he ever wore the crown. Surely he must regret that. okay, but I should really have a cute dance to go along with it. Singing is so much fun. Everyone should enjoy themselves while they're doing it. I didn't even know I cared this much. Claude seems filled with confidence, but I wonder if everything really will be okay. The Imperial Army might be hiding the Emperor, and the troops headed south might belong to the Old Kingdom. I'll be honest, I'm incredibly uneasy about all of this. But at this point, there's no option but to move forward. 
I trust you and Claude, but I feel uneasy. If we lose in the next battle, the Empire's army will likely come surging into Alliance territory. If that happens, my parents won't escape unharmed. They've raised their anti-Imperial flag after all. Thank you, Professor. I'll fight with all I've got to. Speaking with you has eased my mind a bit. Just enough, in fact, to put me in the mood for sweets. mysterious military force is the remnants of the kingdom. You'd think there would have been the possibility of a united front. But from what I've heard, that's going to be difficult. Their behavior is very erratic. They're clamoring for revenge and death, and it's probably better if we have nothing to do with them. Nobles who are changing allegiance again and again. I do not have understanding for that. How can you trust if treason comes with ease? How can you be calling yourself a noble? I do not have understanding of the reasoning. Survival has more importance than that. Are they not knowing this? Hi. Hey there. We secured the win in our first skirmish, but the next battle is a different matter. The Empire will come after us with everything it's got. Even so, the ultimate victory will be ours. And I'm not just saying that. I've made ample preparations to ensure our victory. It's my rule to never leave victory to chance. You can't rely on the protection of the Goddess. With your power and my schemes, I should be able to plot a direct course to victory. We're finally invading Empire territory, huh? There's not much we can do right now, except pray for deliverance. I truly believe that we have it in us to succeed. The next battle could be a big one, is that true? I miss the old days when if someone got hurt, we'd rush them to the infirmary and make them well. But on the battlefield, there's not enough time to help. People die. Professor, don't be one of those. Time we press forward, our search for Rhea broadens to a wider area. I certainly hope we will find at least some clue. But I do suspect I already know where she is. If I'm right, then she is in the Imperial capital. And we cannot save her until we topple the Empire.
smell. Mm, it's amazing. My fave, in fact. Do you like it too? Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! This is nearly as delicious as Mother's cooking! I would happily eat this every day! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. This is my absolute favorite! How did you know, Professor? I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This dish, it was my father's favorite. This is my most favorite dish of all. I love it almost as much as Crestology itself. Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is so good. Can I have seconds? Thanks. I'm glad I asked you.
No. Need something? See you again soon. That great? Don't stop. Keep it coming. <laughs> Praises.
question, Professor. Yeah, absolutely. Professor. Do not push yourself too hard, Lysithia. Why, you might even leave everything to me, should you wish. I've got this, but thanks. I don't need special assistance. No, that won't do at all. I heard about your secret, you know. That went well. A direct result of your efforts, Lysithia. Quite a pleasing result, don't you think? I am getting to the heart of it. It's within my grasp. I'd never have learned this back in my room. I see how this works. This is making sense. All that work was worth it. Nice work. Here you go. Drink up. Oh, thank you. This water tastes absolutely divine. Your shouts are really coming from the gut now. I bet you're getting stronger, too. I'm not so sure I'm stronger, but somehow, when I shout, I'm able to move more books than normal. Although my brother becomes very anxious anytime he hears me shouting. I do suppose my body feels a bit sturdier now, though. I'm so very grateful to you, Raphael. Oh, no. Thank you. I'm just happy to have someone to shout with. But doesn't all this shouting keep you from your precious workout regimen? Nah, don't worry about that. I think I'm in better shape now than I was before. My muscles work overtime when they hear you shouting so close to me. Isn't that wonderful? Come along, Raphael's muscles. We can do this. It is my wish that someday I'll be able to lift a log all on my own with these arms of mine. I'm sure they will. I used to think you were a lost cause, but look at you now. If you really want to get there, you got to start training your muscles when we shout, all right? You've already got big brains, but if we can get you big muscles too, you're going to be invincible. Invincible? I like the sound of that. Rah! 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 Ooh, you're keeping your room really tidy these days, Hilda. I'm pretty good at cleaning, I found out. I guess I was being lazy before. I figured that if I left it to somebody else, I might lose another vase. <laughs> I'm sorry again about that. And about all of the other things I knocked over, too. Yeah. The shelves, and the chairs, and my clothes, and my makeup. Ugh, I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. I put everything back, didn't I? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, Annette, you should try to be a little more selfish. Hmm? That was a quick change of subject. You said how hard you've been working not to disappoint your family. You cleaned my room, or tried to, because I was feeling overwhelmed. 
You're always taking on other people's burdens. Hmm, you might be right. It could be nice to do something for myself sometime. But if I hadn't tried hard for other people's sakes, maybe I wouldn't have tried at all. I might not have made it this far. So really, I don't regret a thing. Who I am now is the sum of everything I've done. You're so soft-hearted, Annette. <laughs> you really think so? I didn't mean it as a compliment. But anyway, I just thought of something you can do for me. You can take a nap with me. A nap? But I'm not done with my chores. Yeah, I could use a little shut-eye. And it feels nice to snuggle up with someone. So, why don't we lie down for a bit? Are you sure it's okay to nap right now? I still have stuff to do for the professor. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Later I'll help you with your stuff and it'll be done in no time. Oh, fine. Just for a bit. The sunlight coming through the window is awfully nice. Isn't it? Nothing better than a nice lazy nap in the middle of the day. Mm, it really is relaxing. <sighs> Already dozing. She must have needed this nap really bad. <gasps> I'm feeling a little drowsy myself. Sleep well, Annette. <laughs> decent cook, but nothing to write home about. Don't set your expectations too high. Cooking can be kind of fun sometimes, though not something I'd want to do every day. Oh, definitely! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I would be liking that greatly. Looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. Oh, my favorite food. You've got to try this.
I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This dish, it was my father's favorite. This is my most favorite dish of all. I love it almost as much as Crestology itself. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too this is nearly as delicious as mother's cooking i would happily eat this every day This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Hmm. I like seeing a table full of my favorite dishes. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. This is so good. Can I have seconds? Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. Singing's okay, but I should really have a cute dance to go along with it. I hope this song reaches the goddess's ears.
I trouble you? Each time I certain if I'm right. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Thanks to you. <laughs> I could get used to this. Yep. With you on my side, this'll be a cakewalk. We'll knock their socks off. Can't argue with results, can you? I'm getting the hang of it. Well worth the effort. Looks like I'm getting it. I'm finding my focus. Thank you. 
my past? I did pretty well. My secret is hard work. Interest is peaked. Petra, you always seem so focused on your training. Ignatz, are you wanting something from me? I want to apologize about the glasses debacle. Apologize? I will give you my forgiveness, but I am not understanding. When I laughed at what you said, I felt really bad for doing that. I'm realizing that I can learn a lot from you. You are learning new things from me? What kind of learning? Nothing specific, but more like... You really take things seriously. You approach the world with genuine curiosity, and consider it carefully. You have a sincere, wholehearted approach to learning new things. I envy that. I am thinking you also have great seriousness. That is why you are worrying. But your worrying is not necessary. You think so? Well, that's kind of reassuring. Also, you have much kindness. You are apologizing for the smallest of things. Your heart is overfilled with compassion. You have honesty, too. You are a good person. Me? Oh, I think that's going too far. You are also having the ability to wear lenses. You are like... a hero chosen by the lenses. Because I wear glasses? That final one was joking. I do not always have to be serious. That was a joke. I didn't realize. I guess it was okay for me to laugh after all. You always look so humorless. It's hard to judge. Oh, I don't mean that in a bad way. You're a fun person to be around. I'll know that you're joking next time. Without you telling me. <laughs> it is greatly important for us to be understanding each other. I think so too. I've been hoping to learn more about you. 
Then we can be spending much more time with each other and learning much. <laughs> Um, Professor Henneman? Why, hello, Miss Marianne. A visit from you is a rare pleasure indeed. I, um, I wanted your opinion on something. Oh, how intriguing. Whatever is on your mind. I'm beginning to feel that I should accept who I am. I thought it might be time to change my training regimen, to utilize my crest, even if just a little. What a splendid thought. Quite exceptional. May I ask how it is you've reached this conclusion? I admit, I did not imagine my words would do much to sway you. The truth is that I was already considering it before we spoke. All of my allies work relentlessly to achieve their goals, both on and off the battlefield. Seeing this, it occurred to me that I have nothing to work toward. I'm no use to anyone. If I could accept who I am, even a little, I might be able to change that. I was still considering, but after we spoke about it, well... Well, indeed. So it seems my words resonated with you after all. I'm sorry. I know I'm not the best at communicating. But it's true. Your words gave me a lot to think about. They helped me come to this decision. Whatever my crest, it should serve me. That's it. Exactly right, Miss Marianne. That's not to say I've accepted it completely, but I refuse to continue living in fear of myself. I have every confidence that you will succeed at drawing out your crest's full strength. And I intend to help you at every step. If you'll have my help, that is. Of course. Your knowledge is much appreciated. Good morning, Hilda. Is anything troubling you today? Nope, nothing. If there was, I don't think I'd ask for your help. I'm sorry to hear that. Have I done something to upset you? Uh, not exactly. You go overboard helping me is all. You do way, way too much. So I feel guilty, like I'm putting you out. Goodness, it was never my intention to have you worry about me. Hmm, can I ask you something? Of course, what is it? What are you doing today? Following my morning prayers, I'll be cleaning the altar, then caring for the flowers in the greenhouse. Then it's off to the library to help organize and sort, then to the dining hall to wipe down the tables and chairs. The floors could use a good polish, too. Oh, and the weather's so nice that I might air out the bedding. After that, it's... Wow, you're still not done? There's more? Well, the dishcloths in the dining hall are all frayed, so I was hoping to mend them. Sewing? Don't you think that's too much? Whatever do you mean? And why are you speaking so loudly all of a sudden? Ugh, I'll help with the dining hall, but I am not sewing. You want to help? That would be delightful. Everyone asks you for help, and you always say yes, don't you? I suppose. I believe it's important to help where you can. If you see someone in trouble, you can't leave them, can you? You're too kind, Mercedes. Literally, I can't empathize. I'm sure you can. You and I are very similar in that way. Are you serious? How? We have nothing in common. That may be so, but you thought I was in trouble, and you agreed to help, didn't you? Well, I mean, yes. That's exactly what I do. I'm so happy to have found a kindred spirit. Uh, if that's what makes you happy, okay. Kindred spirits, let's go with that. Now that I've got you at my side, I can take on even more responsibilities. Not a chance. <laughs> 
So that's it. I'm going to be a great mercenary just like Captain Gerald. Ha! You skipped right to the conclusion. That's exactly what Gerald would do. I know. I picked that up from him, too. That might not be the finest trait of his to emulate. In the end, it comes down to combat skill. Regardless, I'm happy to hear you say all this. Why's that? I've strived to become a knight at the level of Captain Geralt. But I'm an old man. I've come to accept that I will never be his match. No, don't say that. You can't give up. No, no, it's quite all right. I know myself and what I'm capable of. But you're still young. Youth is a weapon of the utmost power. Infinite possibility. We are both inspired by Captain Geralt. So I hereby bequeath to you my lofty ambitions. That's... Wow. I'm sorry, I... I don't know what to say. No need to cry, Leone. I'm relieved. My dream is in good hands with you. Captain Gerald is looking down proudly on you, I'm sure. Will you carry on his legacy? Of course I will. Definitely. Leone, uh... Do you remember the story I told you once about what happened at the inn? The hatchet throwing? Sure, I remember. Why? Gerald ran up quite a tab with all his drinking, and he left without pay. Now his debt is due. And, as you have declared that you'll carry on his legacy... You see where I'm going with this. Wait, what? That's got nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me either. I don't drink. Even so, all this time, I've been paying it back little by little. And it's not just that one place. He owes money in towns all over Fodlan. I haven't been able to step into a tavern anywhere without being badgered for payment. <laughs> so exhausting. But now, I can say that the debts are for you to cover. You're still young, so I'm sure you'll manage in time. Thank you, Leonie. Hold on, that's a joke, right? Hey, get back here! Take your lofty ambitions back! I don't want your stupid debts! Can't stop running. Mwah. We got you. You're the prime minister, aren't you? Not anymore. He lost his power and his fancy title. Now he's just a man. I. Shut up. Yeah. Do you know what you've done to regular folks like us? Since you villains took over the Hrim territory, our lives have been nothing but pain and misery. Heavy taxes, forced labor, it's brutal. Now we're gonna make you pay. <laughs> hmm, such a nice selection of tea leaves in the pantry here. Tea is nice and all, but it's not much good when you don't have sweets to go with it. Sweet treats are less common, yes. But perhaps that makes sense. War is not sugar-coated. If you've got time to be cheeky, you've got time to find me some sweets. But Lysithia, your smile is so sweet. Lord Ferdinand, excuse the interruption. Our scouts happened upon the information you were looking for. I thought it would be best to let you know as soon as possible. They know where my father is? Yes, sir. Tell me, now. After losing his position as Prime Minister, your father was held in Enbar for a very long time. He escaped, 
For a while, no one knew where he was. The other day, however, he was sighted alone in the Hrim territory. Seemed he was heading for an allied region. Hrim? Alone, you say? Was he safe? I'm afraid not. There is a major insurrection happening in the Hrim territory. It's been five years since Duke Iyer lost his control of the area. The military seems to have finally lost control, and the people's violence is unleashed. I do not understand. Why are they rioting? It's obvious, isn't it? Ferdinand, do you really know nothing about Hrim? Your own father was ruling it. You don't know what became of the area once he fell from power? If it was truly a House Iyer territory, I would have been trained in governing the area. But my father insisted that I have nothing to do with Rim. But now is not the time to talk about this. We have to help him before he gets caught up in the violence. You're right. Now isn't the time for chit-chat. Let's get over there quickly. Professor, would you be coming? We'd better depart as soon as possible. I know a bit about the situation. I'll fill you in later.
works a bunch. Come back soon. This is where my father was sighted? The citizens are rioting everywhere. Over there! Quick! We need to help them! There seem to be some people inciting the violence. 
If we take them out, perhaps the violence will subside. It might be best to spread out. The north side of the town is in chaos. I do not think we can advance. It seems better to simply hold the line against the enemies in the north, and focus our efforts on saving the citizens of the east and south. Ready for anything. Apologies. Let's make this quick. Leave it to me. Shall we? At the ready. yourself get my orders I'll do my best Shall we? I'm sorry. Good, but not enough. My blood compels me! Now there's a way forward. Decent form. Steady now. That helps. Guide me well. Thank you. Looks like I won't be robbed this time. What's my strategy? Getting closer?
all comes down to this. Thank you ever so much for helping us. I don't know what would have happened if it weren't for you. You are me.
hindrance. Oh! Destiny unfurls. You're incredible. Got no time for mercy. Is any of this worth it? to lose. Come <laughs> on. 
another victory. Defeat me, left. Had I room to grow? I get to live another day, and it's all because you came to the rescue. I think that's all of them. I'm so glad we were able to help everyone. Should have seen that coming. Battles means more strength. I feel my strength building. I'm not the only bad guy here. What? We give up. Have mercy. That guy made us do it.
This is our chance. Support. Can't afford to slack off. I still have a long way to go. They're ready. Yeah! Oh! A fitting outcome. My orders? I'll do my best. This is for the best, right? I won't let this hold me back. Steady now. What's my strategy? The 
perhaps. Ready for anything. Guide me well. Shall we? Never let your guard down. Shall we? Stop. That's another one. Don't allow it. Pushing myself. You did it. I'm sorry. I must keep going. I'm impressed.
defeat me, left. Will not die yet. This could turn the tides. That was amazing! of Fodlan. I want to do my part. Fun to watch. enough chaos we can do whatever we want orders. It's not like we love a good riot, really!
You're too kind. No time for mercy. Making progress. Stronger. The Blade Breaker taught me well. Lament your weakness.
Time to slow down. Gain from mortal risk. Sorry. Thanks for that. Sorry. Sorry, but I must. Some things you can't learn in a book. Let's think carefully. Guide me well. Shall we? Leave it to me. Ready for anything. What's my strategy? Shall we? My orders?
Let's make this quick. I'll aid you. Let's give this a try. Better not stand in our way. Pull out all the stops. I'm that much closer to my goal. Now my schemes will really pack a punch. Steady now. Thanks. Was any of this worth it? And after I went to all the trouble of killing that noble and stealing his treasure. Father, no! So we were too late after all. Your father, I mean. No, it is all right. Some part of me was expecting this. I do not know what happened in Hrim territory, but I am sure he got what he deserved. You knew more about it, you said? Maybe you can tell me everything later. I can tell you what I know. Please, do. You know about the Harim Rebellion, right? Of course. The rebellion started when Emperor Ionius IX tried to consolidate power. The Harim family tried to split off from the Empire and join the Alliance. Working with House Ordelia, they raised an insurrection. The Empire suppressed it. And then a puppet leader was installed in the Harim territory. House Iyer was tasked with handling the actual governance of the region. Seeing this, the nobles feared that the Empire would assume total control. That's when the six great noble families chose to wrest power from Ionius IX. That's right. The Insurrection of the Seven. I've always wondered why it was called Seven when there were only six noble families. It was the six great noble families, plus Rim. How vexing. Either way, Events unfolded shortly thereafter. Are you aware of how Duke Iyer was ruling the Harim territory? He imposed harsh taxes upon the people, much harsher than on his own, making their lives very challenging. People fled their homes in droves to the neighboring Ordelia territory, but they were sent back from where they came. 
The Empire was occupying Ordelia territory as well, as it turned out. Issues were further complicated when Duke Iyer fell from power. Iyer was dismissed from his position, only to be replaced by Lord Arendell. Edelgard's uncle. The regent of the Empire. Correct. And he imposed even heavier taxes on the people, squeezing them painfully dry. The people were conscripted for duty. Any who opposed were killed on the spot. Lord Arendelle did this in the name of Duke Iyer. What? Your father was by no means a great ruler. But it was Lord Arendelle who stoked the fury of the people and directed that fury at your father. Duke Iyer is not perfect, but he's not the villain in this. Lysithia, thank you for telling me all of this. I am embarrassed to say I had no idea. I see now that it was not his fault, but he did go along the wrong path and place a burden on his people. He can no longer atone for what he did, so I will have to. I need to go think about what I will do after the war, how I will make up for my father's mistakes. Nothing helps deep thought like sweets. Hmm? Sweets. They help you think. Perhaps you should find some for us. I see. If I find some, I will be sure to let you know. There's no reason to feign ignorance. I know all about you. Wh what are you talking about? Just come here. Professor, help! Don't interfere. Just hand the girl over to me. I'm telling you this for your own good. You're putting yourself in danger by associating with her. Do you know of the wandering beast stalking the woods in the Edmund territory? It is said that it attacks people every night and drags them off to feast. The true identity of the wandering beast is that girl right there. No, I would never. No matter. I'll get the evidence I need. My apologies for getting you involved in that. In truth, that man has been following me ever since my father disappeared. He's a Crest Scholar. The crest that my father bore and was passed down to me, it was Maurice's crest. Yes, it's also known as the Crest of the Beast. It's said there were once twelve heroes who saved Fodlan. There was the King of Liberation, Nemesis, the Ten Elites, and finally, Maurice. One day, Maurice suddenly transformed into a hideous beast and slaughtered innocent people. It was like when Miklon of House Gautier turned into a black beast. The negative energy dwelling within his crest turned Maurice into a monster. The people of Fodlan grew to despise him, and he was stripped of his honor. His whole clan was conquered, and it was believed that his bloodline had vanished. But even now, there exists a few descendants who have inherited Maurice's crest, and his curse. My family line is one of them. Maurice's crest is a symbol of disaster. Anyone who comes in contact with it is met with great misfortune. Those who carry the crest become beasts at night and slaughter innocent people. Yes, the rumor about the wandering beast in the woods. People are saying the creature is similar in appearance to Maurice's bestial form. That may be true, but I doubt I could do it on my own. If you and some of the others came with me, though... Thank you. But, um... 
promise you won't tell anyone about my crest? I'm sorry to have to ask, but thank you. Thanks a bunch! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! Is that the one? Thanks a bunch! My new calling. Thank you. 
I've still got some hidden potential. a bunch. Is that the one? Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon. Well, is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back soon. If it helps, sure. wandering beast that people talk about. You... do you bear our crest? For what purpose did you come here? Our crest? Does that mean... It appears that your presence has been detected by bloodthirsty demonic beasts. What's my strategy? I'll do my best. Leave it to me. Demonic beasts! Everyone, please move carefully. This forest is the den of demonic beasts. You will be lucky to make it out alive. Guide me well. Let's make this quick. Oh, nice! Appreciate it.
steady now. Incoming. This should work. At the ready. My orders? Strength is all for a mercenary.
This proves useful. Ah, you did it. me, Professor. Thank you. The Wandering Beast's true form. Could it be? Sorry, I need to focus on the fight.
so close. I must continue my training. Exemplary. Well done. My skills are rising to my status. Defeat me, left. Gotten stronger, haven't I?
apologies. This experience is critical. That truly helped. I'm sorry.
nice. Thanks so much. Thank you. Sorry, but I must. Looks like a wolf. I think not.
apologies. I won't run! Still alive. Impressive. Rebel in my achievement. it up.
Decent form. Very nice. Be smart or I'm finished. I'll use this power for the greater good.
Nothing will stop me from feasting upon your flesh and blood. Just like Miklon's Black Beast, could a hero's relic be at fault? Hero, there is a word that takes me back. Takes you back? You... are you... After so long, I cannot speak of it. Me too! Good time for a secret scheme. to use this skill. Could be better.
Thank you. I really get it now. Well done. cards for my sleeve. Hopefully I'll be more useful now. I can't believe what we saw in that forest. The wandering beast's eviscerated body. Only human bones, and this sword remaining. Surely the creature's true identity was... I'm sorry. You again? I heard rumor that the wandering beast was slain. But do you really believe that frees you of suspicion? Without proof that it was slain, the argument that you are not a beast does not stand. Furthermore, I... Huh? Oh, that sword! When the wandering beast was defeated, this sword... It's unmistakable. Carved into that sword's crest stone is Maurice's crest. But how would the lost magic blade end up with the wandering beast? According to what I know of Maurice's story, he didn't let go of the sword until the very end. That must mean... I see. So that's what happened. My apologies. It seems I was mistaken. I must be going. So the wandering beast was... He was roaming the dark woods for over a thousand years, suffering for his murderous past. It's true. And because of that, I feel as though my curse has been lifted. The blood of a beast no longer flows through me. I feel human for once. Thank you, Professor. I couldn't have done it on my own. Without your help, I would never have found peace. I'll do anything I can to repay my debt to you. Thank you. 
Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. I see needles and thread. What has you engaging in the textile arts, Leone? Patching up a hole in my equipment bag. Take a look. What do you think? If your objective is merely to block up the hole, then I believe you've performed quite adequate work. Blocking the hole was all I cared about, so this suits me just fine. Yes, but your bag is less bag and more a collection of dirty, smelly patches. Smelly, huh? <laughs> I don't smell anything. That aside, don't you have an allowance from your house to make purchases? No, nothing. Worse than that, actually. I'm in debt. I could only afford the Officer's Academy because everyone in my village donated. It's not just that. In the Alliance, you have to pay the nobles as well in order to secure recommendations. Commoners can only get an education by borrowing money. It's pretty stupid. Not sure what makes the nobles think they've got the right to... Oh, sorry, Linhart. Forgot you're a noble. If one is in a family that bears a crest, then you're going to stand atop the social pecking order. I'd raise the topic with the goddess. She handed out crests to the nobles, after all. Just handed them out, huh? You make it sound pretty casual. By the way, I have a weapon to recommend. It should suit a commoner such as yourself. That so? I just told you I don't have a lot of money. You're not going to buy it from a merchant. If you find it, you can keep it for free. Now you've got my attention. There's a legend I read recently about Saint Indec, one of the four saints of the Church of Seros. <sighs> uh-huh. Keep talking. Sorry. Suddenly very sleepy. Nap time calls. Hey, come on! Wake up! You can't just doze off in the middle of a story. Long story short, there's a holy weapon hidden in Lake Tutates that you can use even without a crest. <sighs> Lake Tutates? Right. Let's go, Professor. What's with that look? Don't you want to help your lovely students? Yeah, me and Linhart. Aren't we just the cutest? Leave me be. I'm off to nap. We'll never find it unless you're there. If you're really that tired, we'll just have to carry you. We'll bring more people. We'll take turns. Come on, Professor. You're coming, right? All right, let's go find this thing. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch.
time to get even stronger. to give this a go. Heart, wake up! We've reached Lake Tutates. Huh? What? Oh, um, yes. So we have. A temple on a lake, huh? Looks fancy. And that's a cute, uh, guard dog? Guard dog? Is it I to whom you are referring? Whoa! A magic beast! And it talks! No 
absence. You weaklings should turn tail and run. Uh, hi. We're actually, um, looking for something? I know well what it is that you desire. If you want it, you must first complete my trial. Of course we do. This is as awful as I expected it would be. Perhaps we could go home now? Are you kidding? It's just a little fog. Come on, let's go talk to Mr. Magic Beast. I'm awake. Appreciate it. Thank you. Onward. Leave it to me. What's my strategy? I suspect our opponent is an illusion. If we cut off the source of this magic, they should stop attacking. Steady now. Sorry, it's gotta be like this. My orders? Guide me well. Fought and won. Thank you. 
much needed. That helps. No chance. You defeat me, left. This could turn the tides. forward. A 
another victory. Destiny unfurls. For the future of Fodlan. I believe I can do more. going to plan. Look at you. Lament your weakness. A 
appreciate it. Destiny unfurls. They're waiting on me.
Hopefully I'll be more useful now. We'll fight, but your form and mannerisms suggest that you may be... If you want your wish to be granted, it is better that you fight me in ignorance. You seem to be holding back. Thank you for that. <laughs> Do not flatter me. My power is not what it once was. The best I can do nowadays is to have fun meddling with humans who wander in here. I see. We were hoping you might help us, but it seems that may be too difficult. Beast, if we defeat you, will you grant our wish? Indeed, I will. Great. I may not have a crest, but I'll give it my all. <laughs> you are an interesting young girl. I accept your challenge. I wasn't about to let you go. Appreciate it. Well done.
Keep pushing myself. you're giving away free weapons? Do be quiet, Leone. Somewhere in this temple is said to rest the holy bow of Saint Indec. It is called the Inexhaustible. Could you find it in your heart to let my friend here have it? You have shown my deserving of my sacred bow. I will grant your wish. Yes! Thanks, Mr. Magic Beast! Aren't you happy, Leone? That's quite a bow, and it was completely free. I'll say. I've never seen anything like it. But is it really okay for me to take this? I would say so, wouldn't you? After all, you went through an awful lot to get it. I know, but... Professor, maybe you should hold on to it for me. At least for a while. It's not a weapon just anyone can use. I can see that. I want to be more confident in my strength before I really call it my own. Even holding it right now makes me feel unworthy. I'd really appreciate you looking after it for me. Thanks, Professor. And everyone else who helped, too. I'm really grateful. Linhart, I'm sorry I forced you to come along. But seeing such a kind-hearted person like you... Well, let's just say my opinion of the nobility's shifted a bit. I'm not sure I completely understand, Leone, but it sounds like praise, so I will take it as such. Now, let's get back to work. I need all the training I can get. She already possesses the strength to use that bow. She went through the trouble of fighting a saint so she could claim that weapon as her own. Or maybe you call it a saintly beast. In any case. Oh, and please do let me use that bow. It's not exactly a hero's relic, but it is still rather fascinating, isn't it? I would love to learn to what extent the bow's connection to the crest influences the weapon, and perhaps even... Oh, oh it's been too much of a day, hasn't it? I'm feeling tired, so let's talk about this later. Good night.
was only a trifle. Oh, I was just lucky. I guess all that time wasn't wasted. Don't stop. Keep it coming. Thanks, Professor. That's really nice of you to say. Professor. I 
same with you this time, brother? No need to worry, Flame. Simply leave it all to me. Must you always take away all the fun from me? A most satisfactory result. All thanks to you. Thanking me? But you did everything. Good fuel for a scheme. Could be useful. Let's put this to the test. Well worth the effort. I always was a quick study. I passed? Well done, me.
What a relief. As expected. Strategically speaking, if I poised an archer to lie in wait here, and then lured the enemy in over here... Lysithia, are you up late studying again? I am. But I don't see how it's any of your business. Look, you don't need to work yourself so hard. You're already as skilled as they come. There aren't many people out there who can match you. Everyone knows that. I apologize for my sharpness. I just feel pressured. Why would you, of all people, feel pressured? I place a lot of personal pressure on myself. I need to become as strong as possible to put my parents at ease. When I met with Count Ordelia before, he said you were his pride and joy, but he also said his only concern was that you might be pushing yourself too hard. If you really want to make your parents happy, surely you should start by taking care of yourself. That's true. Then it's settled. Get some rest. Save your energy for tomorrow's battle. You really are very mature, Claude, despite the impression you give off. And I clearly have plenty of growing to do. I probably don't have much room to come down on you for harping on me. Oh, really? Does that mean you won't get mad if I treat you like a child from now on? That is absolutely not what I said. Just after you finally earned a small degree of respect from me, too. Hey, just think about it for a second. You're the only one in the world I treat like this. That means you're a pretty special person to me. You think I'm special? Take it however you like, or maybe the thought is too much for a kiddo like you. Ah, how dare you! Yeah, don't do anything you might regret. I don't want to be turned to dust. I'm feeling generous, so I'll let you off easy this one time. <laughs> well, that's good of you. All joking aside, go get yourself some shut eye, okay? After all, if you don't hurry up, the boogeyman might come out and eat you. All right, buddy, you asked for it! <laughs> Do you remember this place? This is where your dagger almost took my nose off. Ah, yes, the poisonous spider. You really scared me senseless back then. I thought I was about to die. I would not take a life without reason. Ever since then, I've been intrigued by you. Somehow, I keep returning to this spot. For a nap, I'm sure. <laughs> you see right through me, don't you? But it's true that I think about you a lot. What are you gonna do once the war is over? Have you decided on your next place to belong? I haven't given it much thought. Will you go back to Dagda? There was no one waiting for me there, and no reason to hurry back. Besides, I've grown accustomed to the nomadic lifestyle. I can make do wherever I find myself. Though, I may be interested in visiting Almira. Almira? That's a bit out of nowhere. It's as far from my homeland as possible. That's reason enough for me. And you? Where will you go? Oh, I haven't decided anything just yet. But if you're heading to Almira, maybe I should pay a visit to Dagda. Why would you do that? Because it's where you grew up. That certainly warrants a look. 
And once we've both seen our fill, how about we plan to meet back up somewhere in Fodlin? And do what? We can tell each other where we're headed next. Who knows, we might find ourselves belonging in the same place again. Though if we do, I hope it'll turn out to be more permanent than this temporary coincidence. <laughs> we can decide where we belong when we get there. True. The future's more fun when you don't know what it holds. I look forward to finding out, Shamir. <laughs> Hi, Ingrid. That was a great training session. It was indeed, Claude. It's so nice to see you. Things have been pretty busy lately, though. I hope you're taking the time to rest whenever you have the chance. I thank you for the concern. You are ever so kind. I've finally got a free day tomorrow, so I was planning to sleep through the morning and laze around all day. That sounds so lovely. Perhaps I should do the same. Ingrid, will you just stop it already? You still doing that shtick? Whatever do you mean? Are you feeling all right? You're acting so... demure. It's kind of creeping me out. Ugh, you can't be serious. I always knew you were a layabout. But I see now you're also an insensitive nitwit, too. If I lecture you, you complain. If I act pleasant, you also complain. Ah, you switched back! Please, tell me how to behave. At least if you're commandeering my behavior, I'll get less of an earful of your complaints. Have you ever even once considered thinking before you speak? And you wonder why people so rarely trust you. Ah, right. I'm sorry, I guess that was kind of insensitive. Wow, quite the apology. Sounds a lot like one of your myriad excuses. Do you really expect empty apologies to help you get your way? I'm... Suddenly feeling dizzy. Oh, so dizzy. We'll have to talk about this later. There you go again. You and your excuses. <sighs> I thought if I made extra efforts to be pleasant, he and I might finally interact without bickering. I just don't know what the best approach is with him. There is no best approach. Were you listening to everything I just said? Ugh. I thought you'd run off. I told you before, didn't I? You're better off as your normal, prickly self. I don't mind getting lectured by you, so keep on doing that from time to time, okay? Just maybe not all of the time. Anyway, oh, the dizziness. Bye. <laughs> as if an occasional lecture could ever cut it. <laughs> Ah, Marianne, I've been meaning to thank you. The books that you lent me have proved most fascinating. Would you permit me to offer you tea as a token of my gratitude? Um, I'm a little busy right now. Maybe later tonight? Of course. I will look forward to it. Thank you for inviting me over. Certainly. Thank you for coming. Oh, and please relax. This is no formal occasion. This tea tastes so good. Doesn't it just? This is my absolute favorite. I'm pleased you like it. This pastry may suit your palate also. It is commonly paired with this tea in my homeland. Ah, uh, it's sweet. It complements the astringency of the tea. You have exquisite taste. And there is plenty more where that came from. We simply must do this again. You want to spend more time with me? Naturally. Well, that's... Actually, there's something I need to say. Yes? What is it? I've been keeping this from you for a while. It's... It's about my crest. It's just terrible. I... Please, that's quite enough. Oh. You're trembling. If uttering this secret hurts you, then I have no desire to hear it. It... It's just... Your smile is a greater gift to me than any truth. Whatever you have hitherto concealed, I am certain it is essential to you. 
and I do wish to know it. But not until the day arrives when you can tell me with a smile on your face. I am not the sort of man to prize my own knowledge over others' happiness, you know. Besides, the mystery is part of your charm. <laughs> You're funny, Lawrence. There, that's what I mean. Your beauty is always captivated, but that smile truly warms my heart. This is the first time I've smiled in so long, and I have your kindness to thank for that. <laughs> as I've said, you are perfect just as you are. But I suppose I can take a little credit. Yes, your radiant smile shall illuminate all the world. With me by your side, you will not be able to help it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Shamir! <laughs> Raphael? All right! That went better than I thought! You make funny sounds when you're scared. I wasn't scared. Forget that happened. Still, I'm impressed. You managed to sneak up on me. Not many can do that. It's because I practiced that in, out, out breathing you showed me. I practiced until I passed out. It was worth it, though. I've been able to get real close to enemies lately without them noticing. I think I pretty much got it figured out. Sneaking up on you is a good sign. True. To be honest, I didn't think you had it in you. I never thought you'd be able to suppress that unbearably palpable presence of yours. I respect anyone who could learn so much in such a short period of time. You might even be ready for a recon mission. Recon? With you? And me? Together? Why the surprise? I said you were ready. Wow! I never thought I'd get to go scouting with you! I guess that practice really is paying off! <laughs> Whoa! Was... was that a smile? Calm down, Raphael. Are you really that excited to go with me? Your presence may have dimmed, but your emotions are hitting me like a tidal wave. Oh, sorry. Is there a way to breathe and hide those two? No. That requires different training. From someone else. I'll keep you informed about the recon mission. Okay, great! Looking forward to it! <laughs> Hey, Lysithia. I'm glad I found you. What's up, Cyril? Could you read something for me again? Looks like it's another shopping list. I'm happy to help you out. Did you try looking it over yourself yet? What's the use? I told you I can't read. Have a look here. Any of these letters look familiar? Huh? This one? Was that... apples? So it says... three... apples? Yes, you got it! See? You can do it! I wonder if there's anything else I can recognize. Let's see... It's clear you've got a sharp memory. If you apply yourself, you'll be reading in no time. Reading is such an important skill. Once you learn, you won't forget. And I won't be around to read things for you forever. Lysithia? Anyway, don't you enjoy learning? It seems like you haven't even thought of trying prior to this. Do you simply not have time for it? Until now, I never thought about how to learn. And since I was hiding it, I never asked anybody. But right now, I feel like I'd be happy to live like this for a little bit longer. It seems like a hassle at this point not to learn, so you may as well start putting in the work. Well, I like having you read things to me. You do? Yeah. You always seem happy when I ask you to read things. And when you're happy, you smile. I think you're pretty when you smile. I bet you everyone tells you that though, huh? As a matter of fact, they haven't. Stop messing with me. Hang on a second. Am I the only one who's seen you make that face? Is that why nobody's told you? Excuse you? I mean, honestly. Okay, well, 
I'm gonna go take care of this errand for the professor. I'll see you later, Lysithia. Don't expect me to read for you again. And, uh, just take care of yourself, will you? Hello, Hilda. Good day. Is it? I, uh, uh, did I do something wrong? Not to my knowledge. But I cannot help but notice that you no longer shy away when I speak to you. <laughs> you noticed that, huh? When you stare at me, I feel like you're peering into my soul. And that no longer bothers you? Does that mean your conscience is finally clear? I got used to it. I know you're not scary. That's unfortunate. You really should do something to correct your lazy behavior. Maybe that's true. I wouldn't want to be like the fox, forced to wander in the snow all winter. I'm pleased to see you grasped the moral of the story. Don't you think the squirrel was a little cold-hearted, though? He seems not to care about what happens to his friend, as long as he himself is happy. You know... That is a valid point. I have no wish to encourage that attitude in children. Perhaps if the fox only survives thanks to the squirrel kindly sharing some of his acorns. How does that sound to you? I like it okay. I'm sure that kids will admire that nice compassionate squirrel. Thank you for your insight. As it happens, I have some other stories that I wrote for Flame. Would you like to hear them? You should make a book out of them. It's a shame that only Flane and I get to enjoy them. What a fine idea. I will begin immediately. Though I feel such a book requires illustrations, and I have no artistic talent. Would you lend me a hand? Uh, I think Ignatz might be a better choice, but I can probably manage. Not like they need to be terribly fancy. I could use some more of your wisdom with regard to the content of the stories also. That sounds like a pain, but I'm invested in this now. Let's do it! Excellent! That's wonderful to hear. Let us produce the very best book we can. For the children's sake! You look so excited. I can't help but lend a hand. Um, here. I patched up the clothes you gave me. Hey, thanks. You've helped me a lot lately. I feel like I should be doing this stuff myself. But ever since you patched up my sleeve, I've been really interested in your craft. Craft? Uh, you mean my embroidery? Yeah. When I saw what you were doing, I thought, what the heck is that? But it turned out to be a nice touch. Once I was actually wearing it. Practical, too. When you're embroidering, you patch up the torn parts with new cloth, right? And that strengthens it, so the same part won't break as easily next time. <sighs> I'm glad you like it. At first, I felt like you thought it was stupid. I was worried you secretly hated me or something. It made me pretty scared to show you my stitching. <laughs> so sorry. I should have told you I liked it. Thanks, Bernadetta. I'm glad I asked for your help. Oh, um, it's nothing. What'd you make this time? A hornet, huh? You do like the scary critters, don't you? It zips out from the trees and strikes, just like you. I sting like a hornet, do I? Actually, I like that. You know, you ought to be more confident. What? You're good enough at sewing that you can make a living out of it. You should take pride in that. Your skills would be really useful to the war effort, too. We're always needing equipment mended. Useful? Oh, no, no, no! I'm completely useless! Even more so on the battlefield. Oh, that's not true at all. You've been a great help. Maybe I'm a better fighter, but I've got nowhere near the same skill at sewing. We can help each other. Isn't that what friends do? Friends? We're friends? Hey, come on! I know you're not the most confident, but this is getting silly. Of course we're friends. I completely trust you. <laughs> Leone? Yeah? Give 
get your clothes torn up as much as you want. I'll always be here to patch them right up. <laughs> right, for sure. But I wasn't just talking about embroidery, you know. Hey, Shamir, how do you think I'm doing with my bow lately? Think I'm getting pretty good? I hit closer to the bullseye today, and that felt real good. You were fine. Fine? That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Shamir. <sighs> you take too many direct shots, though. But it's easier if you shoot straight. Of course it is. But if you can hit your enemy with a straight shot, you're too close. Tell me, Cyril, what's an archer's greatest weakness? Um... When we get too close to the enemy and we can't shoot the way we're supposed to? Exactly. As an archer, your position is critical. Know exactly how far the enemy is and keep a minimum safe distance. Understood? You mean to stay away from the enemies, but not too far away or my arrows can't hit them. So you understand why you can't rely on straight shots. You have to use curved shots as well. Never run up to your target. Hit them from a safe range. Shoot them from a safe range with curved shots. Archers should always control the battlefield. Okay, yeah, I get that. I'm gonna go practice some of those curved shots right now. You're not a bad student. If nothing else, you have the right attitude. You think so? Keep it up. I will. Flame. Here to pester me, brother? No. I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. No, the fault is entirely mine. You are still so young. I placed far too much strain on you, and our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We... lost her because of me. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them. As an ordinary person. Similar to how you and Mother coexisted with your own comrades back then. Fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father... Don't. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together, but I am no longer a child. Just as you and Mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and Mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear Father Keyhole. Thank you, Sethleen.
My next steps are clear. My next steps are clear. and one. You got yourself killed. yourself killed. A fitting outcome. smell mm, it's amazing my fave in fact do you like it too i would be liking that greatly my compliments to the chef ah oh, I can eat so much of this stuff my stomach's growling just thinking about it
This is delicious! My absolute favorite! I'd rather eat alone in my room, but since that's apparently not allowed... Okay. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this does not disappoint. Eating food always fires me up. Hoorah! Let's go fight somebody! This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I know. Let's have tea together after our meal. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. I'm happy to eat alone, but all right. this dish it was my father's favorite somehow everything tastes better with company Professor, I apologize for the uncomfortable atmosphere between us. Hold on. I'm afraid I am to blame. I apologize for making it awkward for the two of you. There's someone who's slightly off. Oh well, that adds some color, I suppose. Learning these things gives me great difficult, uh, 
difficulty. Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Turn soon, please. Hello there. This one, yes. I this one, yes. I thank you. Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. Uh, you have a good eye. Uh, you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business with you. Come again. how long it's been since I left home. Since I was dragged out of the house, I mean. Five whole years. It's weird to think about. At first, I remember I was desperate to go back, but now it's the opposite. I have friends here, and I have you. The monastery's become a second home to me. Back then, I never would have dreamed a day like this would come. It's all thanks to you. You've given me a second chance at life. If not for you, I never would have gotten used to leaving my room, let alone the monastery. Maybe the battlefields just dulled my senses. I'm much better with strangers and new places now, though. I don't panic nearly as much as before. What? Independent? As in, alone? That sounds like a tough assignment. Where did this come from all of a sudden? Hey, hold on. You're teasing me, aren't you? Please don't joke around like that anymore. It's torture for me. You're still not taking me seriously. I mean it. Promise me you won't do that again. Friends respect each other's feelings, don't they? Good. I'll hold you to that. You're absolutely not allowed to send me out anywhere on my own. Got it? You would need to come with me. If you're with me, I can go anywhere in the world. No! That defeats the purpose! Why can't you get what I'm saying? I thought we were finally getting close. I guess I'm not good enough for that, though, am I? I'll let you have this one. But you better be ready for next time. Grander Field should be around here, right? It's so foggy. Even if there were enemies here, we'd never know it. I recall the terrain from the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, but without the ability to see the enemy's formation... Our enemies are subject to the same conditions. We'll just have to wait for the fog to clear up. Speaking of enemies, what do you think became of those unidentified troops? Any follow-up reports? We haven't heard anything since. If they were headed this way... Well, I'd like to avoid being caught by surprise, but we can't make use of our scouts because of this fog. It's hard to predict this fight. There's no way to know what will happen. We did everything we could to prepare. If we lose despite that, then we'll just have to accept it as fate and retreat. Your guidance is going to be crucial, Teach, now more than ever. Do whatever it takes to lead us to victory. <laughs> I am always glad to spend time with you. Ah, a miraculous brew. You truly understand tea. Much appreciated.
Not bad. Sorry? Whoa. Sorry? Right. Mm-hmm. You treat everyone the same, regardless of status. Perhaps I should do that as well. <laughs> Sorry? Hmm. You are looking for a weak spot, are you not? Look as long as you like. You will not find any. <laughs> mm -hmm. I trim my eyebrows carefully every morning. A noble must always be well groomed. Sorry? Exactly what I hoped for. Thank you for spending time with me. What a treat. I hope we can do this again soon. Put the match on hold for now, Lawrence. Or if you can't wait, we'll say you won. No. Let us resume it later. You haven't yet had the chance to use Thunderbrand. You weren't using a relic either. If you had been, you would have won easily. Even without it, you're stronger than I expected. You seem to be fighting more intensely than usual. Under ordinary circumstances, I'd have surely lost. But I had a vested interest in testing your character. If your swordplay relied at all on the dirty tricks of a fugitive, I would have felt compelled to defeat you. Are you saying you fought more ably because you had a sense of purpose? Not as such, although I admit that when we crossed blades, I became envious of your strength. I caught a glimpse, in your elegant swordsmanship, of an aspect of the noble ideal that I yet lack. That envy is, perhaps, what drove me to fight so hard. Interesting. I was also able to satisfy my curiosity. You are no criminal, but rather a lady of great conviction. That might be an exaggeration. I've done some things I'm not proud of. Modest as ever. Another of your noble qualities. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm no longer a noble. Whatever your title, the responsible use of power is the very hallmark of nobility. Deny it all you like. The way I see it, you are indeed a true noble. I don't want to be a true noble. I won't be tied down by any stuffy idea of nobility. Although, if this is your way of flirting with me, perhaps I can be persuaded otherwise. That's rather sudden. Tell me, Lawrence, do you often woo noble women? As a true noble, I must be an ideal target for a fellow like you. Since you put it that way, I... Uh... Apologies, but I confess you've rendered me quite speechless. Lighten up. I'm just teasing. You're clearly not ready to woo me. Not ready? Do I not suffice for you? Is there some flaw that I could conceivably correct? You're more open-minded than you used to be, but you're still so hung up on status and lineage. If you became a more tolerant person, maybe it would work out. What matters isn't someone's blood. It's what they want, what they fear. What they accomplish. When you understand that, let me know, and I might just fall for you. Just wait and you shall see, Catherine. I fully intend to live up to the very highest of your standards. <laughs> Bernadetta! 
Sorry, just passing through. Didn't mean to scare you again. No, no, it's all right. Actually, I came to talk to you. I owe you an apology. It's, um, long overdue. Huh? What do you have to apologize for? I'm hopelessly terrified of you. So every time I see you, I kind of lose my mind. But once you're gone and I get time to calm down, I realize I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you before. I feel awful. I hope you can forgive me. Come on now. It's all right. I wasn't really that bothered by it. Promise. I should have been more careful not to scare you. I'm a big guy, and my muscles can be intimidating. No. No, you did nothing wrong. It's all my fault. How about this? Let's say it's both our fault, and call it even. But you know, I've been thinking. You really are scared of everything. Is there something we can do to fix that? Y you mean like a cure? Something like that. I think we can figure this out. Your biggest fear is talking to people, right? If that's the case, you need to change the way you think about talking. Right now, you think it's bad, so you're afraid to do it. I figure if you talk to more people, then you'll think talking is good. It might be hard to suddenly start talking to people, though. You're gonna need to take it slow. Oh, I know. Start with me. W with you? That'll be, um, tough. Maybe, um, maybe if you turn around, face the other way. I guess if that's what you need. How's this? I bet if you get used to talking to me, your fears will go away in no time. You're, uh, still really intimidating. But, okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> Oh, Marianne, are you confessing again today? No, I was waiting for you. For me? Um, I wanted to apologize. You kept trying to encourage me, but I just avoided you in return. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. I only wanted to give you some advice, but I ended up running you off. Can I tell you something, Ash? Of course. You said that my crest is an extraordinary gift, but I don't agree with that at all. Don't people have more important qualities? What do you mean? Like, um, how much we help those around us. Or whether or not we can make other people smile. Sylvain says that a person's value is in their smile. Sylvain, huh? He really can turn anything into a line. I'm trying to be less negative. I've also realized that I should have a dream to pursue like you do. I think people who have something to work toward are more fulfilled. Yet here I am, living an empty life without a dream. That still sounds kind of negative to me. What does being fulfilled even mean here anyway? Are you saying that people without dreams live empty lives? I don't agree with that. When I was a kid, I was too busy worrying about my next meal to have a dream. Was my life empty then? That's not what I mean at all. I just don't know... I don't know how to find my dream. Hey, chin up. Maybe I can help. I'm sure we can come up with something for you in no time if we put our heads together. You'll help me? Absolutely. Unless, uh, you don't want me to, of course. No, I would appreciate that. I want to find something worth working toward. Together, with you, and with my head held high. Hey, Hilda, can I ask you something? Hey, Kaspar. Sure, go ahead. Well... You know that thing you do where you flirt with guys and get them to do stuff for you? Why don't you ever do that with me? Oh, you want me to take advantage of you, eh? I'm happy to oblige. You're surprisingly sharp. <laughs> you know, I just... Wait, surprisingly? 
What's that supposed to mean? I didn't think there was much point in taking advantage of you. You're not one to do favors. So I just never bothered. It seems like less trouble to do things myself. You really think I'm so heartless that I wouldn't be willing to help you out? I'd be happy to help, depending on what it is you need. That's not my style, though. I don't ask people to do favors for me. I prefer for them to notice what I want and offer to do it themselves. You're not attentive enough to notice. But you do notice that I'm working my charms on others. How bizarre. I guess that makes sense. Sorry I've been so oblivious to your needs. But why can't you just ask? Well, when I ask someone for help, it's awkward for them to say no. So they go along with it even if they don't want to. But when they offer to help, everyone feels better about themselves. Sure, but if your plan is to guilt someone into offering their help, isn't that the same or worse? Oh, my dear Caspar, guilt isn't why they offer. But that's neither here nor there. I don't want to feel like I'm constraining you. I like your carefree lifestyle. I'm not sure I follow, but I like the way you live too. Not being tied down by anything or anyone sounds like a pretty easy life. I get that. If there's anything you really need help with, though, don't be afraid to ask me. Sometimes you can't afford to wait around for someone else to notice. That's sweet, Caspar. Thanks. Well, since you're offering, why don't you come to my room? I thought of something you can do for me. Your room? Are you redecorating? Or moving out? You're really oblivious, huh? I don't know what to do with you, Caspar. I don't follow. I, uh, could use some help carrying luggage. Is that it? That's no problem at all. And that's how it's done. Good to know. There are so many differences between bows and blades. Yes, you're a quick learner, Leonie, and quite a good teacher as well. <laughs> Must be Captain Gerald's influence. The weather, the terrain, the enemy's feelings. You have to find ways to make it all work for you. I agree. A warrior can't stick too closely to predefined tactics. That's quite shrewd. You're impressive for a girl. For a girl? Come on, you're past that. Looking down on your opponent is a great way to fall into a pit trap, isn't it? I suppose that's true. Glad you remember. I still have much to learn. Not only about swordplay, but also about thinking on my feet. I hope to learn more from you, Leoni. Count on it. We'll come up with plenty of new ideas if we work together. Guess that means we're partners, doesn't it? We're what? Partners. Friends who help each other improve. Hmm. Huh. Partners. That's not bad. Not at all. Looking forward to working with you, partner. Likewise, partner. Departing from the Great Bridge of Murden, the Alliance Army marches south toward Enbar, the Imperial capital. As an unknown military force begins their advance under the banner of the Kingdom, the Imperial Army dispatches forces from Fort Mercius with the intention of intercepting them. The curtain is rising on a conflict between the three armies, which will come to be known as the Battle at Grander held on the same plains that witnessed the battle of the eagle and lion.
My secret is hard work. I feel like I've been reborn. Sure. A new me? How momentous!
a bunch.
Know that I will tear your heads from your shoulders. The dead must have their tribute. As big class reunions go, this one's got to be the worst in history. Years ago, we fought here as classmates. But not today. Kill every last one of them! And so we fight on. I will crush anyone who blocks my path. Dimitri, he's alive. But he doesn't look interested in joining forces with us. It would not be advantageous to take on both at once. We must stop the Kingdom and the Alliance from joining forces. I will create such chaotic warfare that they won't be able to tell who is friend and who is foe. Steady now. Thank you. That helps. I will... Let's make this quick. Much needed. Thanks for that. Leave it to me. No chance. I'll do my best. What's my strategy? Shall we? Shall we? Long way to go. <laughs> Guide me well. Fought and won. There are enemies in the central area. We need to head there immediately to protect it. My orders? Steady now.
Should have seen that coming. Mounted units, advance. forward to lose. Am I getting closer? <clears throat> the Imperial Army is starting to crumble. We will step on the Empire right along with the Alliance troops. To the eternal flames with all of them! Getting better with age. That's the spirit. For Gerald. I wasn't about to let you go. I think I've mastered it. So reliable. to slack off.
working out. So close. You got yourself killed. I feel my strength building. That is all. outcome well worth the effort keep it up those fools who went up the hill will pay with their lives in the crimson flames
No time to slow down. Central Hill is up in smoke. Suppose I'll have to quench the flames with the enemy's blood. <laughs> Should have seen that coming. Sorry, it's got to be like this. This could turn the tides. This experience is critical. Like I'll just have to get rid of you. If I do not will endanger my life, Your Majesty, I must withdraw. No need to worry. We still have some troops left. So long as I stand, we won't give up. Should have seen that coming. Let's 
make this quick. There's a way forward. Guard down.
Well done. Apologies. going to plan. Calm down, Dimitri. What does it achieve, us killing each other here? Move, Claude. I have no time to exchange words with you. It doesn't matter what I'm saying, does it? You aren't even listening. But I'm not gonna budge. Hold the grudge if you must! <laughs> Where are you, Aim God? I will not stop until I kill you! Shall we? Thank you. What's my strategy? Are you trying to stop me too? Then I'll just have to kill you! At the ready. Calm down, Dimitri. My moment has arrived. Where are you, Aid God? I will not stop until I kill you. In the name of His Highness, you die here. I'm sorry! I can still fight, Your Highness. Guide me well. Haven't withered away just yet. Leave it to me. That's another one. This is working out. Steady now. My orders? Shall we?
you must. I fought and won. Committed to memory. That was amazing. What's my strategy? I wasn't about to let you go. Stronger than before. Much to learn from battle. Well done. That helps. I'll do my best.
I will no doubt make use of this. Did it. That helps. Two 
Thank you. Sorry. I finally mastered it. This proves useful. Thank you. Did the trick. I can exceed this. Oh, nice! Apologies. We haven't seen each other since Garrick Mach. You've grown lovelier than ever, Edelgard. You're not so unfortunate yourself. And you have the aid of the Professor. Frankly, I'm jealous. Now's the chance for you and the Professor to leave. I'm afraid I must decline. Even if we left, we just have to come right back. You're the best! 
I will destroy both the kingdom and the alliance. Now, with one fell swoop. I knew when next we met, one of our paths would have to come to an end. Your journey ends here, Professor. Forever. I lost. Just as expected, you aren't making my path an easy one. I must retreat for now. We'll meet again on the battlefield. Even in an ugly battle like this, it's important not to lose heart. We have to take pride in our victory. We did it, Teach. Now we can move forward to our victory. So, Edelgard retreated. I suppose she lives to be defeated another day. Too close. But I suppose all that matters is that we won. Some of our allies are injured, but can still fight. We'll just have to accept this outcome and press onward. Still, the battlefield looks awful. And I wonder what became of the Kingdom Army and Dimitri. I saw him. Who? Dimitri? He was completely different from how I remember him. He looked like a crazed demon while he was fighting. He pursued Edelgard as she retreated, but he didn't get far before he collapsed. I saw him surrounded by Imperial troops and pierced by their spears. I'll never forget it. He deserved a better end. <sighs> Dimitri. He went through so much to make it here, only for his efforts to be in vain. I can't even begin to understand what Dimitri must have been feeling, but there must have been some other way. Why did he have to go like that? And his vassal, Dudu, did he fall as well? <laughs> I don't know. Your Highness. Your ambitions are my own now. I... I will bring you Edelgard's head. I swear it! Professor? Claude? May I have a moment of your time? Lysithia, what are you doing up this late? Trouble sleeping? Anyone would be shaken after such a brutal battle. If you're having trouble sleeping, you should drink some warm milk. That's a thing, right? Must you treat me like a child, simply because I'm awake a bit later than usual? <sighs> Actually, I can hardly muster any indignation right now. I wanted to tell you that I noticed something odd during that battle. What was it? There were some strange mages among the ranks of the Imperial Army. Did you notice them? That's right. I have seen people dressed just like that before. It was a long time ago. House Ordelia was involved in a rebellion that took place within the Empire 18 years ago. After it was quelled, all of the key officials were caught and put to death. The Empire sent replacements, who they used to take control of House Ordelia. Among the people sent by the Empire were mages dressed in black, just like those we saw in battle. If they're Imperial mages, 
It makes sense that they would wear the same clothing, right? Yes, but the mages from back then and today, I do not believe they are from the Adrestian Empire. No, I got the impression that they were from somewhere else, somewhere completely separate from Fodlin. There's more. Those mages imprisoned the children from my house and performed horrible rituals on them. Blood experiments. Lysithia, you can't mean... even you? Yes. All of the others were deemed failures. They all died. And even I... <sighs> it doesn't matter. The point is that those monsters possess dreadful knowledge and power. I just thought you should know the sort of people who have allied with the Empire. Blood experiments. Does that remind you of anything, Teach? Exactly. There was that secret group who abducted Flane and extracted her blood five years ago. The people involved back then were Tomas and Monica. Well, I suppose their true names were Solon and Kranya. So, that eerie group has been slithering behind the scenes in the Empire for a while now. Lysithia, thank you for sharing all of that with us. One day we will uncover the truth of who those people really are. We've managed to invade Empire territory and emerge victorious in our first battle. I hope to maintain our momentum and push onward to Envoth, the Imperial capital. Unfortunately, we are not legendary heroes in a fairy tale. Our stamina has limits. The longer we fight, the harder the fight will become. It will take immense effort to secure the supplies and soldiers we need to prevail. Boy, you better not be saying this is as far as we go. Of course not. However, the road ahead leads deep into enemy territory. It'll be a difficult journey, strewn with hardship. I can't guarantee that we'll make it out alive. If anyone wants to leave, now is the time to do it. I shall accompany you to the very end. After all, someone must step up to take leadership should you fall. I'm coming. The future of my village depends on this. Besides, I have to protect the professor. For Captain Gerald. I'm not going anywhere. Because of the Empire, my little sis can't live in peace. We can't leave the future of Fodlin to others. I'm sure that everyone here feels the same. The Knights of Seros will keep fighting the Empire. We won't rest until we rescue Lady Rhea. I feel the same as the Knights. I've got to rescue Lady Rhea no matter what. So what? We're all supposed to take turns saying we'll do our best until the very end? And what about you, Marianne? What will you do? I... I'll fight too. <sighs> Fine. Fine. I suppose I'll tag along too. Until the bitter end. <laughs> it's an honor to keep fighting alongside such stalwart allies. Right, Teach? I know I'm a great leader and all, but praising me isn't gonna get you anywhere. All right. Now that I know where each of you stands, I'm going to return to Alliance territory for a while. I intend to report this victory to the Alliance Lords and draw out even more support from them. Our next battle will be even more challenging, so brace yourselves for that. Hmm, I should write to my brother. He'll want to hear about our victory. Your brother, Lord Holst? How is he these days? Oh, he's doing great. I even got a letter from him before the last battle. He wanted to come and join our fight, too. What's this? Lord Holst come here? That would be a most reassuring development. Sadly, it sounds like my father was against the idea. They want him to stay in case they need to fight the Almirans. Their logic is sound, though it is vexing that the Alliance's greatest general cannot join us on the front lines. We should be glad that Holst is staying behind. Almira aside, there's also no guarantee that the Imperial forces won't try to launch a surprise attack from the Old Kingdom territory. Um, if you have something you need to talk to my brother about, I'd be happy to send a letter. No, that's okay. I'm just glad to hear he's doing well. Please send him my regards. <laughs>